We're out here in the biosphere once again. <laughs> Talking to Jermaine, you have a very interesting business. I, I am Definitely. genuinely curious about all of the different things that you do. Yeah. Um, so I'm a luxury wedding photographer. Uh, I do portraits, maternity, headshots. I mean, anything with portraits except babies. <laughs> I shoot sports for the NFL, for the Chicago Bears. I do some work with the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, New York Mets at times, and a lot of Big Ten football, uh, sometimes basketball. I started out with WNBA. Uh, but then I have my nonprofit um, where it's called the Art of Confidence Project, where we help children of color all across the country with self-esteem, confidence, uh, building up their character or whatnot. And um, it's it's amazing, man. I, I love all the genres because sometimes when you only do weddings, it, it can get to a point where you're like, all right, here we go. Like you get burnt out or it's the same old thing all the time and you kind of lose that that joy and passion for it. So I love the fact that I can be in so many other genres to where I can miss weddings and be like, all right, I'm ready to go back. So, yeah, that's very, very cool. Um, I think that a lot of us are told early on that we have to like specialize in like one specific thing. That was the worst advice I ever got. It was the worst advice I ever got. Somebody was like, hey, if you're going to do weddings, do weddings. If you're going to do portraits, do portraits. Master that. Stick with it. That's your niche. Don't go outside of that. And I'm just like. Okay, when I first heard that, and I was like, all right, I focused on weddings, and I was like, eh, I kind of want to do other stuff, you know, because then, then you limit your income, you know, and I love my money. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that was the worst advice. I was like, that was shit advice. I was like, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Talk us through like the first, uh, how, how did you get into wedding photography? How did you get into photography in general? Mm. It's so funny because I got into weddings because someone told me I couldn't do it. Uh, <laughs> I was literally chasing a photographer to pay him to take uh, photos of my daughter. And I'm reaching out, reaching out. And the guy just never picks up the phone. He's like, oh, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'll get back to you. And I'm like, after like three attempts, I'm like, I should have to beg somebody to take my money. Right. And so I decided I will go to Best Buy. I bought me at that time. I was a Nikon shooter. Uh, I think it was like a D. 3000 or something back yeah. then. It was like one of the very first ones. And uh, a crop sensor uh, went to YouTube University. And that's, that's how I started learning, man. And I just started having fun with it, fell in love with it. And when I saw some of the results I got with my daughter, I was like, oh, yeah, I love this. And falling in love with my child and, and then photography and the photos I was capturing, I was like, hmm. You know, which one would be more profitable, you know, and a lot of people saying weddings, you know. So in my mind, I was like, all right, I'm going to go to where it's most profitable. And now had I known about commercial photography back then, I probably would have went commercial. But um, I, I like the idea of capturing love and being able to be a jack of all trades, because at a wedding, you are the most diverse photographer in the world if you're a wedding photographer, because you're getting details, which is like commercial shooting. You're getting portrait shots, which is like editorial. You're getting candidates, which is like photojournalism. So, you know, I felt like if I can master that, I would master so many different things. Yeah. So what did that progression look like? You buy your camera, you're having some yeah. fun, you're taking some stuff that's meaningful. And how do you turn that from just a fun passion and make it a business? Or how did you make that decision? Um, it's It started with when I started doing like little small events in my community. Um, and at that time I was with a marketing company and um, we, they were having like general meetings weekly and I would just photograph the speakers and I would photograph like behind the scenes of what people were doing. And, and so many people were like, Oh my goodness, this is good work. And I'm like, Oh, it is like, <laughs> I'm like, Oh, okay. Uh, I should charge for that. And I had no idea about pricing. I just charged what I felt was fair at that time. And once I realized that you can make some real money in this industry, I was like, OK, let me start getting some education behind this thing. Uh, one of the things I did was I got with one of the wedding planners uh, and a local wedding planner, and she kind of took me under her wing and I was booking weddings left and right. But, you know, at that price point, you know, I, you probably expect to book a lot of weddings at that time. I think it was like twelve hundred bucks or something like that. It wasn't a lot of money. But for me at that time, it was a lot of money because I'm like, wow, 
I never made like twelve hundred dollars all at one time, you know, for a wedding, and then have a wedding the next day, make the same amount of money, and I and at the time it was paying bills, you know. So once I understood, like, okay. It's more to this because not only are you shooting a wedding, you got to go back home and edit it, which takes time away from kids, your family and other things of that nature. Uh, the things that you love to do, like I'm a gamer. So I love being on my PS5 <laughs> gaming. And it's like, yeah, I don't want to be doing all this editing. I kind of want to, you know, be with my kids gaming. So but once I figured out the business side of it, how to make money, how to use systems it, everything just started to click at that moment and it, everything just ascended from there from starting off at twelve hundred dollars to earning high six figure income and in wedding photography. Yeah. Was there a moment? Was there the kind of that light bulb moment in the business uh, side of the of your wedding photography or just your photography business that really went off that changed a lot? It was when I saw that wedding photographers were getting paid like ten, fifteen thousand dollars for weddings. I was like, wait, what? Like, how are they doing this? And you don't know until you go to an actual conference. And then, but I feel like conferences are good, but I love workshops because workshops are a little bit more detailed and in-depth. And in that process of being able to meet with individuals one-on-one, you understand the nuances of, okay, this is the reason why we charge this amount of money because we offer this, 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 and this, not just because, oh, we're just going to charge an exuberant amount of money. It just makes sense, you know, because of, the gear that they're having, the post-production that's required with that, um, the experience that they give with that. So all of these things combined, it's like, oh, okay, I get it. So you're providing something that other people usually aren't to justify the reason why they get the money they do. So I was like, oh, let me step my experience game up and offer that to my clients. And once, first, you have to have a mindset shift. Once you have a mindset shift and having the mindset, OK, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a business, then certain conversations start to become mundane to where you're like, all right, in my business practice, I know I'm going to stand fast at my pricing. I'm not going to negotiate because I know my worth or I understand that not only do I have to pay myself, but I have a team that I need to pay. So I need to put my price set here then educate my customers and my clients. And let them know the experience you're getting is you're getting someone as well-rounded, but then has an entire team. So our margin of error for a day is going to be slim to none. So you're safe and sure to know you're hiring a professional. And it's so different using a word professional in our industry because there's a lot of wedding photographers, but it's different when you're a professional wedding photographer. Yeah. What is uh, the early stages when you're shooting those $1,200 weddings? it's scary to start stepping up your prices. What did, what did that kind of time period look like for you? And how did you go about doing that? I was terrified, man. I even raised it at $2,000 at that time. Cause I was like, I was booking like, <laughs> it was like continuous, but I understood the reason why was cause people were like, you know, you were cheap, you know, at that time. And at, I didn't know my worth at that time. I just felt like I was being fair because I didn't know everything about wedding photography. I didn't know, all the details of shooting a wedding. You know, I knew what I knew of from YouTube and from going to certain conferences. But it's the things that you learn through experience that you're like, oh, yeah, I probably should have waited for that, you know. But um, deciding to go up in pricing was figuring out the gear that I was paying for at the time, the CRMs that I was using, you know, the apps that I was using to... Um, get our clients through funnels or even having a second shooter, making sure that they're paid adequately. Um, even the subscriptions that you use, your your photo shops, your, your light rooms, that package, along with, because we were offering video, um, the, what is it, the Adobe? Uh, Premiere. And, Premiere, like yeah. all, of, so when you start adding all of this stuff on and you're only charging $1,200 for a wedding, it's like, wait, I'm left with almost nothing. So yeah. it's like, all right, now nah, let me let me go ahead and adjust accordingly. And then is when you go into classes, because a lot of people like to go into photography with these classes of, oh, let me see how you pose. How do you do lighting? How do you do light and area? How do you get these vibrant colors? But most people don't want to go to the business side. And then, and then once you start understanding pricing systems and key things, 
it's like your mind just expands and you realize the possibilities of what your business can become. Yeah. I think that's really cool. I think that it's, I wouldn't say it's polarizing, but people either come into the industry as an artist and they yeah. want to retain that, that artistic integrity or they come into it from more of a business mindset. And it's yeah. so hard to kind of bridge between the two. I know that, um, I don't know if this resonates with you at all, but I feel like I have, because I am so deep into the business side that I have lost a little bit of the artistry. Um, and that's a weird thing that I have to deal with. And it's yeah. like, I have to actively put more of my time and effort into yeah. making sure that I'm spending time developing those skills. Yeah. Um, and that's been something that, I don't know, because I came into it from a more of an artist side. Right. Um, were there any books or courses that you took specifically that were kind of key things for your business um, in terms of learning what you learned? Okay. So I promise I am not doing this for him, but um, there was <laughs> there was a tutorial that you had on how to shoot weddings, photography and video. Yeah. That took my business to the next level and allowed me to charge 50% more and actually no 65% more because I was charging more for my time for shooting photo and for video and then to understand how to be able to process that later and post and all these different things. I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, this is a game changer. So because sometimes people are booked that like they'll say, oh, we really like you, but we've already booked our photographer. So then it's like, okay, now I'm waiting on the next client to book me for photography. But here it is. Now I have the information on how to shoot video and I could just shoot highlight films for company, uh, for clients and make money doing that. And I was like, oh, it was a no brainer. And, and then when I started learning that, oh, Jermaine, you don't have to edit all your videos yourself. Like you can get you an editor like, oh, what? So then it's like, okay, now I can charge more and I can do that. So I would say that video was absolutely instrumental in my career that really broke barriers for me because it allowed me to expand as a creator and not just be Jermaine Horton photography, but the one of the reasons why I changed my name to Jermaine Horton studios, because now we're a complete organization and a complete creative studio versus just being able to do photography. So it was absolutely that. And Jerry Giannis's class, um, it was a one, it was like a probably 30 people in this class in Santa Monica, California. And I had to pay for my airfare to get there. I paid for my hotel. And understand, Santa Monica, California is not cheap at all whatsoever. <laughs> it is it is higher than giraffe coochie. Like, that thing is, is expensive. So, and then you still had to pay for the fee for Jerry for his class. But it was so worth the investment because... I learned how to pose. I learned how to use natural light. I learned how to use strobes. I learned how to use natural reflections. And these are things that I was like, and sometimes just the smallest things like, you know, putting a, a person next to a window here and you're like, okay, let me see how I can get these reflections. Like the little small nuances that will separate you from the next person. Those are the things that I learned in those uh, workshops that I went to. Yeah, that's amazing. So Jerry was a key to unlocking some potential. Were there any other people or who, who do you look up, look up to now? Man, um, I love the expression when they say your idols become your rivals. Um, and I believe in it in a good way. Like uh, when I first got into the industry, it was Jerry Giannis, who I looked up to. Um, it was people like Joshua Dwayne, um, Stan Lowe, who's a good friend of mine, uh, Kareem from Reem Photography. It was... At that time, I, I forgot their names. It was a husband and wife team, Amy and something demos or something like that. Yeah. Can't remember the names. Um, I don't even think they're around anymore. But um, but then it was like, all right, once I got to the level where I am today, now it became where Jerry invites me over to his home to stay over when I'm in Vegas, you know, um, to where we have a great relationship. And even now, I'll still go to one of his classes. It's, it's never a thing of even at the level that I'm at that I know everything. You know, I will still go to the people that I looked up to. I will go to their class. I will pay $1,200 or $1,500 because I may know everything that they're talking about, but it may be one thing that they say that's like, oh, and you get that aha moment that takes your business from making. And I'll never forget. I, I went to a conference and I was like, like, I know all of this stuff, but I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get something from it. And sure enough, it was one tad bit that took us from, you know, mid 
six figures to really high six figures, just adjusting one or two things. And and I think the education part for some people, they just feel like, oh, these conferences are people for just to get together. But at every conference I've been to, I've created a relationship with somebody that took my business or opportunities to the next level that I never thought was imaginable. So, and I will say at WPPI, that is where my dream job opened up and came out and happened. So what was that dream job? The Chicago Bears, man. Like I've been trying to find, um, there's a photographer for the 49ers named Terrell Lloyd. And we always talk, but he's always busy. And so the average person would be like, man, Terrell's just blowing me off. But the man was so busy because he's shooting. Like when you think of sports, you're like, oh, okay, it's just during the season. No, during the off season, they still got production stuff that they have to get ready for the season. Uh, charitable stuff through the season, the draft, like it's so much. And I was just, I was just being patient and being patient was like three years. And because COVID had hit, cause he was like, Hey, I'm gonna bring you to one of the games and I'm gonna let you do like a preseason or something like that. They're going to be playing the bears. I can get you in. And I'm like, yes, COVID hits. I'm like, shit. Like, are you serious right now? Like, I'm like, my dream just keeps getting deferred. And so we were at WPPI. And I finally see Terrell for the second time. And we're just talking, having a conversation. We're all in the lobby, not even in the class, in the lobby. We see the, the Rams. Uh, at that time, they had just won a Super Bowl. The Rams photographers come in, two of them. They're showing off Super Bowl rings. I'm like, wait, the fuck? Y'all get Super Bowl rings? <laughs> what? Okay, bet. Say less. So you mean I don't have to get injured and I get a ring? All right. I got to <laughs> figure this thing out. And so then we had one of the Oakland Raiders uh, photographers walk up. And then it was the Kansas City Chiefs photographer that walked up, Steve Sanders. And me and Steve just had a conversation. Terrell's like, hey, Steve, this is Jermaine doing an introduction. And Steve was like, hey, you know, I may have an opportunity, you know, come to Kansas City. He's like, you're in Chicago. You know, I don't know how you feel about that. I was like, dude, I will fly on my own dime to Kansas City, bro. Like, just tell me what I need to do. And the crazy part about it was Steve started following my Instagram. So he saw what I could do with portraits. He saw what I could do with weddings. He was like, okay, this kid's got the goods. I know he can do this. So his first gig to me was to come all the way out to Kansas City to shoot every last Kansas City Chiefs player for the promo of the season and like every each photographer had like their own set. It was like three or four sets. I'm on a jail set, this creative jail set. And here it is. I get the pose like Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, um, some of the players that I covered in college that I saw. That was like, damn, dude, I wish you that came to the Bears, bro. And, he, and they're just laughing. And they're like real cool people. But that experience and then to see it on Kansas City social media channels, to see it in their stadiums and to see it on trading cards. And like, I'm like my work like you know that meant everything to me and then he got me into the preseason game for the bears and the funny part about that was his uh he had an apprenticeship and one of his interns or the person that was in this program his seasonal photographer was the bears photographer who's their actual main photographer so he knew who he was and was like hey i'm gonna get you in contact with this individual he did that. Me and him talked. And he was like, there's an opportunity. And I knew it was real because after that, the Bears uh, asked for my background check. And I started doing that, filling it out. They was like, hey, if we do get you in, fill out the payment slip and all this other good stuff. I'm like, all right, all right this is progress. And then Steve has me shoot the preseason game. Went really good. And in wedding photography, well, at least I thought, right? In wedding photography, I'm always taught to, I was taught, be intentional with when you're shooting. In sports photography, it's different. <laughs> you need to be intentional, but you know, I hate, I hate, even my second shooters, they overshoot. I'd be like, because mm, I got to call through that shit, right? And I'm just like, so I always shoot intentional weddings. So for, what, for a sports, it's like, you got to hold down the shutter and go all the way through. So at first, I was like, click, click, click. I, I got that moment. Click, click, click like not shooting all the way through sometimes. And Steve was like, bro, you should have way more photos than this. I was like, really? I was like, oh, I just thought I was being intentional. He's like, no, I, I need you to do more. And I was like, all right. And I appreciated his critique 
and what he told me. And I thought I bummed it. I thought I lost it. I was like, shit, like that was my opportunity. But I was like, all right, I got to shoot my Bears versus the Chiefs in the preseason. I got it done. Got a call from the Chicago Bears and the head photographer was like, hey, we'd love you to shoot our home games. And not only did I shoot home games, but I even went and did one of the away games at the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, which was incredible. So, um, again, every conference that I went to, something magical happened. I either became an ambassador for a company, uh, being a Sony artisan, being a Westcott top pro, a Stella ambassador, uh, shit, what else? Fundy Design, um, SLR Lounge, uh, spider holster you know like all of these different companies and even more and it was just like because every conference i went to i just had conversations i was networking and i got to meet new people and build these relationships and people just always look up like every time i see you at a new conference you're in a new ambassador for something <laughs> i'm like look i just build relationships you know and it happens organically and that's what i don't miss them i do not miss conferences yeah. i don't miss them that's amazing yeah. i'm very happy to hear that it's such a challenging Thing to get into you can't just yes. be like i'd like to shoot the nfl please <laughs> it and is the hardest like when people tell you it's hard to shoot sports in general it is it, it is hard to get into the nfl it is one of those things like you have to know someone to know someone and know someone that knows someone to get in the nfl big 10 or like college if you're with a, a company that's credentialed they can get you credentials sometimes but even then like you got to do like high school or something to to like build up your resume. And I didn't even do that. Like I went straight to WNBA, like, you know, and they were like, hey, I want you to go shoot the Sparks. Who was No, it was the Sky and a Fever. And I would drive to Indianapolis for this opportunity. And that's when I met people like Cheyenne Parker. She plays for Atlanta now. But then she became one of my clients to do portraits and everything else. So it's like, oh, same thing with the Bears. You know, I've had Bears players to come to my studio now doing maternity shoots. So it's like, it all just comes together. That's amazing. It is. It's, it is. Man. It's been an incredible journey, I think. Yeah. What's, uh, what, what, it, so I know that you're kind of, you do a lot of things even beyond what we've even talked about. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you've taken what you've been doing in the wedding space and kind of parlayed that into even larger things? Yeah. Um, I feel, again, I feel like weddings will prepare you for everything. If, if you know what you're doing with weddings, I'll say that. And, the I feel like weddings is like you have to really focus. You have to be intentional. You have to be like a Swiss Army knife. And it applied to sports because sometimes even at weddings, you'll see a moment and some people get caught up in the moment, but don't shoot through the moment. Because even though that person was like smiling, you're like, oh, they're smiling, click, click, click. But now they get there. They go into that. And that part, but then you miss that part and then you finally get this part. But that transition was so important. And it's the same thing with sports. Like when you're shooting through, some people make wait till he's like right here catching a ball. But then they're like, okay, I got him catching the ball. Boom, I got the shot. But if you keep following through, you will see the catch with the ball. And then he'll do something like this and turn his head and give you this eye contact. And then the celebration afterwards, like, oh, I got the catch. But then they do something at the end when they like, First down, and you're like, oh, <laughs> shit, like, oh, I didn't know he was going to do that, you know? And those are just things that you just learn through the process. But um, having my studio has been amazing. That opened it up. The income from my wedding photography helped me open the doors for my studio to where I didn't have to ask other photographers, hey, can I use your studio? I have my own. And I feel like when you do good things, good things come back to you. And I was able to get this amazing studio that's like 4,500 square feet for like a reasonable price for like $2,000, you know, along with utilities included Damn. that has 25, 30 foot ceilings that has windows. It's like 20 feet. Like, it's insane, man. And it wasn't nothing but the grace of God for me to find that that somebody offered it to me. And they did a lot of the work out of their own pockets. And mine was just kind of minimum. And it's just it all comes from just trusting the process, but being intentional with your process. Each year, laying out goals. All right, what are we doing this year? Like, I'm. I just turned forty in May. I'll be, well, last May. I'll be forty-one this year. I'm already trying to set my retirement plan. Like, 
I don't want to be that old dude at the weddings that's 70 years old that's, you know, moving around, like, because that's all I got, you know? Like, I want to be the person that's in their 50s at the Bulls games every season sitting there because I have a team doing everything for me already. I have systems in place that allows me to enjoy my life. I don't want to work to live, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to, you know, I, I always feel like if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. But sometimes we end up working to make a living when really I just want to live, you know, and live life, you know. So I love that I'm a season ticket holder for my Bulls. I'm a season ticket holder for my Bears. And all that comes from the business, you know. And it's still strategic because I take clients or potential clients to the game. Or sometimes I'll run a special like, hey, if any of my clients, I'm going to put you in this pool. If anybody pays uh, full price, you know, up front, and because sometimes I want certain things, and I'm like, hmm, what's the quickest way for me to get this new furniture in my studio? I don't want to charge the credit card. All right, <laughs> bet. All right, I'm gonna offer some Bulls tickets that you get to hang out with me, you and your significant other at the game, and I'll put you in a pool of five people. So you five people pay your entire balance in full, and you're gonna go into this pot, and I'll do it live. And I don't even do it with all of you know everyone else. I'll just do it with those five and pick their name randomly out of a hat. And they're like, oh, but then what I will do is for the others because they don't think they get nothing. They're like, dang it. Well, we did pair of wedding off. That's fine and cool. But then I'll give them like a free print. You know, free print is not going to cost me anything. But to them, it means everything because the markup price. So those are just little things I learned that kind of expanded the business. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, we'll start to wrap up. Any suggestions for somebody that's getting into the industry right now? And they're maybe at that kind of tipping point where maybe they're not working for their ideal clients yet. And maybe they're a little discouraged. What would you tell somebody in that space? I would say if you are in a place where you feel that you are not where you want to be, go hang with people that are where you want to be. I, I tell people you are the sum of your friends. If you hang around four broke people, chances are you're going to be the fifth one. But if you hang around four successful people, chances are you'll be the fifth. So your network is your net worth. So if you hang around other successful people that understand how the process goes. They will teach you these things. They will have conversations. And, and it can't be, hey, what's your name? I want to learn. And like, I want to like, it's as you build the relationship. I see what a conference and in January, hey, how you doing? We talk, we have a good time. I see you at WPPI or another conference a few months later. Hey, I remember you, yada, yada, yada. You actually come to somebody's workshop or class and invest into yourself by supporting them. And then they'll take you serious and be like, oh, this person really is serious. Let me give that person a little bit more of my time. And then they'll mentor you. So I have a mentee, uh, Daryl Wilkerson. Like he came to one of my one of my uh, workshops. He's now my second shooter, my associate shooter, and he's my go-to. So when I, when I had the Bears ask, say, hey, we may need another person for a game. He's always wanted to shoot sports. I'm like, yo, the opportunity is yours. So you just never know. And I give him weddings that I can't even take, you know? And so it's like, if you just hang around the right people, they'll get you to where you want to go. But the issue is, God can't steer a parked car. You know, you still got to put that thing in drive and you got to move forward because some people, they just in neutral, just expecting things to happen. Like, OK, it's supposed to happen. It should happen. But you got to go out there and make it happen. But show up to conferences, show up to workshops. Don't be afraid to invest in money. I hear people say, well, I can't make it to that conference because I don't got the money. That's the reason why you need to be at a conference is because you don't got the money. Because if your business doesn't allow you to spend an extra three, four hundred dollars to get into a convention, then it's like, all right, what are we doing? Then something's not working here. You can room with a roommate, put four people to a room like and you split it like you're not here. I mean, you can hang out and have a good time. But the important thing is to get the information so that you can be in a place to where three, four, five hundred dollars is not an issue for you anymore. And once you have that mindset, that's when you start cracking the code of being a true entrepreneur. And that's when things change. Amazing. Yeah. Thanks so much. <laughs> this is 
this is incredible. Well, thank you for uh, having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And where can people find out a little bit more about you? Hey, follow me on Instagram, uh, Jermaine Horton Studios, J-E-R-M-A-I-N-E, Horton, like Horton Here's a Who Studios, uh, on Instagram, uh, I'm on Facebook, uh, and my Twitter is Jermaine Horton. So I'm accessible, you know, comment, shoot me a DM, let's talk.